Good morning, my name is Steve. This is Bentley. Welcome to Clarence Park Baptist Church Wednesday morning service. We're going to spend time today just listening to God's word, worshipping God and then sharing communion together. So let's prepare our hearts as we come and gather together. So as we come to worship this morning, I'm going to invite you to read the words that are on the screen and as we come to those that are in the blue type, to speak them out wherever you are so that uh, though we're scattered, we'll be united in the sharing of these words together. We're called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We're called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are the light of the world. We're called to follow the commandments of the law. The law of God is to love God and to love one another. Come, let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Come, let us love one another with the love of God. Let us join together in our love of God to worship and follow Jesus. We're going to do just that. I invite you to join with me in singing as Bill leads us in a song, You Are the King of Glory. Let's sing together. This morning I want to talk about blue tack to help us understand the message of the gospel. I don't know if you've come across blue tack before but it's uh, sort of like a plasticine type thing that's used to stick uh, posters and other stuff uh, to the wall and uh, I want to talk about blue tack because I was uh, googling yesterday and came across a question uh, about blue tack. Somebody posted this question 
What stops blue tack being sticky and when it loses its stickiness, can it be made sticky again? Reminded me of something that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 5 verses 13 to 16. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So what stops blue tack being sticky? Three things. One, when it picks up impurities. Two, when it dries out. And three, when it gets too wet. I guess that's a bit like us, isn't it? Our effectiveness as salt and, and as light is affected when, when we pick up impurities, isn't it? We lose our effectiveness to live for Jesus when sin is in our lives. When we're dried out. How do we dry out spiritually? We dry out by not walking with Jesus. When we stop reading God's word, when we stop praying to God, when we stop that relationship with God. We stop being effective, don't we, as disciples of Jesus Christ. And when we get too wet, when we water down our faith, when we water down and compromise what we stand for, that we no longer hold to the values that we're taught of in Scripture. Actually, the world says, if you don't value your faith yourself, why should they? What stops blue tack, blue tack being sticky when it picks up impurities, when it dries out, when it gets too wet? Exactly the same for each one of us. But Jesus asked this same question, didn't he? He said, can salt be made salty again? Can light blue tack, can we be restored? And the answer is spiritually yes. Through confession and through the renewing of faith, we can come back to God. And if we've become ineffective in the way that we live for Jesus, we can become effective again. We do that, and as we come to communion, don't we? We should do that through confession. That we come before God and we acknowledge the things in our lives that are wrong. And we bring them before God and ask for his forgiveness. And that actually in coming in communion, what are we doing? We're renewing our trust and our faith in Jesus, whose body was broken and whose blood was shed for you and for me. And it's my prayer then that as we share communion today, that we may be like Blue Tack, that we'll become effective to serve God in all that he has prepared for us, for his kingdom work. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you call us to be salt and light, to flavour our world and to shine out for you. Lord, as we come to this table, we're conscious that for many of us, sometimes that light has dimmed and that salt has lost its flavour. So let's come firstly with confession to God. Let's confess to God those things that we have said and done. Or maybe the things that we've left undone. Those impurities in our lives that come between us and God. And Lord, we ask forgiveness from them. We know, Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for our sin. So take that sin in our lives, those things that we've left undealt with. Holy Spirit, wash over us and, and renew us today as we share in this bread and cup, I pray. That we may live as your people, being effective for you, for the work which you have called us to do. 
And so Lord Jesus, thank you for this table now, bread and cup before us. As we share in them, may you speak into our lives, we pray, and renew our faith and trust. In Jesus' name, Amen. Before we come and share in the bread and cup together, we're going to sing together. This is a song, Broken For Me. So let's sing. So we come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. In fact, we don't come to this table because we are strong, but we come because we know we are weak and we need God's faith and God's help and God at work in our lives. So come to this table because you love the Lord a little and would love to love him more. Come not because I invite you, but because Jesus invites you. Come sharing the bread and the cup. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, shared a meal with his disciples. At the end of that meal, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, 
This is my body, broken for you. Then he took a cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, This cup is a, is a sign of a new covenant, sealed by my blood. Drink you all of it. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that in the sharing of the bread and the cup, we remember Jesus' death and resurrection until he comes. And so as we pray, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this simple meal that you've asked us to do in remembrance of you. As we share in the bread and the cup. Though we are scattered, thank you that we are united together through faith. Brothers and sisters, children of God. So pour your blessing upon us as we share in this meal now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to take your bread and just to tear a piece off it. And as we just hold it for a moment in our hands, we remember that the body of Christ was broken for you and for me. And so let's eat together. We take a cup. We're going to drink together as part of the family of God. Thankful that the, through the shedding of blood we know the forgiveness of sin. So let's drink with thankful, grateful hearts. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for the simple meal that we have shared in. Things that are so simple that have such deep meaning. Thank you for all that they mean for us. But as we come and share in this meal, we pray for others. We pray for those who've been in hospital this week and those we know who've had operations. We ask for your continued hand to be upon them, to help them in their recovery. Restore them back to health, we pray. For those who still await hospital appointments, for those who are poorly at this time, for whatever reason, have your healing hand upon them, we pray. For our children as they go back to school this week and next week, for the teachers, for all involved, staff in school, for those bus drivers who take them to school. Lord, be with them all and keep our children and our staff safe, we pray. Just have your hand upon them. Bring your blessing to them. Where there is still fear, bring peace, we pray. Lift that anxiety as people know that you are with them. We pray especially for those teachers who are returning who are vulnerable still and we ask for your protection especially upon them at this moment. We continue to pray for those who work in our, in our hospitals and our doctors, our nurses, all those our community nurses. We pray for them, Lord, as they still continue to respond to those who are, who are poorly. As they care for those, Lord, who have COVID-19, who are still in our hospitals, we pray for protection upon them. We pray for those suffering with COVID-19, Lord, that you may bring them through to healing. We continue to pray for those who have been bereaved and ask that they may know the peace of your comfort and of your help and of your strength. We pray for your church. As we move into this new, this new month and many churches are looking at returning to worship in, in buildings, we pray for your protection upon all people and give all churches wisdom in when it is right to go back and how they go back, we pray. Pray that for our own church. We pray for your blessing upon our government, our council, 
on all who serve and help us in every day in our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Who taught us to pray using the words of the Lord's Prayer, which we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let's sing together again. Wonderful song, There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own son, as John and Julie lead us. Let's sing. As we begin to draw this service to a close, I just want to draw your attention to our recent uh, leaflet gathering for worship as we're looking at the changes that we're making in uh, next Wednesday, really, to do with some of the things that we've been doing online. Uh, you can download that leaflet off our website and the link is in the comment section on this YouTube channel video or you can go to our church website page www.cpbc.co.uk slash newsletter. The address is on the screen and you can download the document from there. What we are making changes, so this is the last Wednesday morning communion service that we're doing at the moment uh, and instead we're moving this service to an evening and it will be in the church at 7.30 uh, for about half an hour, maybe just shorter, 
uh, for those who are able to uh, attend. There's details in that leaflet of uh, all that's going to be taking place and there's details in that leaflet of how to book. You will need to book a seat. Uh, numbers are restricted but we will be recording that service and uh, it will then go on to our YouTube channel, uh, the one that you're watching on now. Uh, you'll be able to follow that uh, probably from the th some point on the Thursday uh, itself. Sunday mornings are not changing, except that we're moving communion to sharing that on a Sunday as we did before lockdown on a first and third Sunday of the month. So you'll be able to pick up uh, and share communion with us on a Sunday itself. All of our leaflets uh, are on that newsletter page. They're uh, quite self-explanatory, but if you've got any questions, just email us at connect at cpbc.co.uk and uh, we will return messages uh, to you and have conversations uh, with you. It is exciting as God brings us back into our building uh, and it will be a case of learning as we go along together. Some of you still might not be sure as to what that really entails and what it will look like. So in the next week or so, we will be posting a video that will just give you a bit of an introduction of what it means and what it will look like in the church building uh, and instructions that will need to be followed. So just keep an eye out uh, on there. In fact, if you subscribe to this church uh, channel, to our church channel, uh, as soon as that video has gone up and gone live, uh, you'll get a ping and a notice in your inbox that that video is available for you uh, to watch. And for some of you, if that means you're thinking about actually is it safe to go back, once you watch that video, hopefully that will allay your fears and uh, give you an idea of how the system will work uh, and give you a sense of how safe uh, you may feel. It's what we're, we're looking at and moving into as we go to September uh, and as we move into October, we're looking at beginning some uh, house group, but more to start with online through Zoom. Uh, and there's details where those will become out shortly uh, and we'll have multi-rooms and we're looking at them for those small steps of beginning to move back slowly into a different normality for church life. We've been exploring on Sunday simple church and we will be sharing with you as a leadership in coming weeks part of what that means for us uh, as a church, not just in terms of our simple discipleship, but what does it mean to be church? What is the heart, the essence of what it means to be Clarence Park Baptist Church or any church that we're in and that we're worshipping from or that you may uh, belong to. But for now, as we close, I just want to say thank you for joining uh, with me. Uh, we've held communion services on a Wednesday for many, many years in the church and we moved those online at the beginning uh, of lockdown. So some of you have only found us since then. Uh, thank you for being with us on, uh, on that journey. And I trust and pray you'll go and continue with us on this next stage uh, of this journey. So it's just a shift of time. Eventually, we'll be broadcasting the 7.30 on a Wednesday live. It will be live streamed, so you'll be able to watch it as it happens uh, rather than recorded from as it happens in church. So my prayer is for God to continue to bless you and for you to continue to know God's peace. I'm sure that's the prayer for every one of you, for each others who are watching this. And we're going to express that now as we share together the words of the grace. So as these words are now on the screen, will you join with me? And Bentley, who's gone to sleep, will you join with me as we share together the words of the grace? We say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.